you say Yes, it's that time again It's Tech Tuesday Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship. This week, again, we're coming to you from the City Worship Studio. Uh, this week, I want to show you if you're in the studio or if you're working on maybe a live recording your church has done, uh, how to edit drums very easily and quickly using Logic. Uh, Logic is a $200 program. It's amazing what you can do for that. If you're looking to get some help with this kind of thing, uh, you can also reach out to us. We do editing, mixing, mastering, uh, everything very affordably. So if there's something you're interested in, hang out to the end of the video and I'll give you some contact information. Um, but for today, let's look at how you could do it in Logic yourself. So here we have a session that we recorded the other night um, with several drum tracks. And um, the drummer did very well on his own already, which is a great start. Uh, this will be a lot easier for you the closer your drummer is to nailing it on their own. But we just want to tighten it up just a little bit before we bring in uh, the other musicians to record bass, guitar, and keys, and everything else, uh, just so that they're going to be spot on with the drums as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I have enabled uh, the playlist feature on Logic. Uh, in case I mess anything up, I always like to be able to go back and, and make adjustments again. So the first thing I'm going to do is, um, they call it track alternatives. I'm going to duplicate this so I can do whatever I want to, to this session here. And if I mess up, I can just go back to A, which is going to be where we started. If you're not familiar with Logic up here, this little arrow means that I've done some different takes. Um, so we've tried a bunch of different alternatives of this drummer. There's just a couple points where we had him uh, punch in. So before we start doing a lot of drum editing, I want to consolidate all this down into just some smaller uh, chunks of things that we are sure that we like. And again, I can go back if I need to. So I'm click on this little arrow here, and it makes it a little bit more obvious where there's some crossfades happening. Uh, so let's listening uh, listen to each of these crossfades. Move them around if necessary, and then we'll uh, we'll consolidate. This one should be pretty easy. Doesn't look like there's anything here. Cool. Let's see, listen to this one. This is all right. I can hear. Um, it sounds like the symbols change just a little bit. So I'm gonna move this crossfade to right before those toms hit. Uh, which is very easy to do in Logic. We're just going to do that right there. Cool. I'm good with that one. Oops, jumping around a little bit here. Again, it looks like there's nothing here, but let's just double check. Yep. Let's just move this one right to the beginning of that hit. Just double checking. That sounds good to me. All right. And do we have any more? This one at the end is just, there's nothing there. Okay, cool. So I'm happy with that. Um, by the way, I should have mentioned this first. Uh, before you start making any of these changes, you need to make sure that your drum tracks are grouped. Uh, and so mine already are, but if you haven't done this yet, you need to put them in a group. You need to make sure that on your settings you have editing and quantize lock set up on there. Uh, also, I've got track alternatives, so again, when I change that one track alternative, they all changed. Uh, once you do that, you'll notice over here on the side um, that you're going to have a bunch of little cues that are going to pop up on here. These determine when you're doing any editing uh, with flex markers what tracks it's going to listen to. 
Uh, we don't want everything set up because it's just too much information and cause some issues. So you can see we just have the, tr the kick, the snare top, Tom 1, and Tom 2. Um, so we have that set up when we did our, our edit. So that meant when I moved that one file over the overheads, it did that for everything. So you can see all these lines line up. So all my edits are, are happening at the exact same spot. So now I'm going to go up here to where this little A is. And I'm going to um, flatten and merge. And so what that's going to do is it's going to uh, make one track for each, uh, or one region, excuse me, for all of these tracks. And uh, that'll make things a lot easier when we go do our edits. I'm not going to make you watch this whole thing. Uh, it's pretty quick, but uh, we're gonna just going to skip ahead here. Uh, and now you can see that we have solid regions for this entire drum take on each channel. Uh, so now we can turn on flex time. For me, that's Command F. And you can see up here, we got this little drop down menu. We're going to do slicing. And again, this will take just a moment. Logic is going to go through and analyze each one of these new tracks that we just made. All right, we skipped ahead a little bit again, and now all of our flex time is done. Um, so before we start actually quantizing anything, we want to narrow down just a little bit uh, how many flex markers Logic is actually trying to use. So I'm going to quickly turn off the flex view, so Command F. And all these channels that we had uh, selected earlier for flex time to listen to, I'm gonna double click on the kick, opens up our sample editor down here. I'm gonna go to File, I'm gonna look at my flex markers. Let's make this a little bit smaller so I can see it all in one spot. And using these plus and minus buttons, I can set just how sensitive it is. So like if we listen to this, so there's some tom hits in there that are not actually kick hits and uh, Logic is just too sensitive at the moment. So I'm gonna narrow this down and see it got rid of those. And these are probably all kick hits here. Yep. So we're gonna just kind of skim through make sure that we don't have a lot of false hits going on and make sure that we're not missing any hits. There's a spot where there's a couple going on. Yeah, that's right. That all looks right. Cool. And I'm pretty sure those are snare hits right there. Yep. Okay, so we're done with the kick. Let's go to our snare top. Now snare is a little bit trickier because you're gonna have uh, usually a lot more articulation going on. Um, I know for a fact these are not snare hits in here. So let's just go ahead and make everything a little bit less sensitive. It's probably pretty good. This is an interesting section because he does some snare rolls. I don't necessarily need every single snare hit to be caught up on this because if I make it too sensitive, I'll start picking up things that I don't want to pick up. Um, so I'm really more interested in the accents, like the regular snare hits. And it looks like we've got them all on here. Um, let's see what's going on here. Yeah, I think that'll be all right, at least to start with. And that's a kick hit at the end there. Okay, so let's move on. Let's get our rack tom. Toms a lot of times, oh, let's turn this on. We'll pick up snare hits or kick drum hits. So like that's a crash, it's not a, a, a floor tom, a rack tom hit at all. So bring that down. All that looks about right. Snare hit. I'm making things less sensitive. I 
again, probably right around there. And again, this drummer is really good, so we don't have to worry quite as much about getting every single hit. But it looks like we've got them. Okay, let's go to our floor tom. Again, that's a cymbal hit at the very beginning there. Let's trim these down a bit. Okay. I think that's a kick hit there. There's a lot of miss hits here. Let's trim those down. Not sure why that one wants to stay in there. That's all right. Okay. That looks about as close as I'm going to get that. I think that's good. All right, so now that we've done that, when we actually go to quantize, it's going to be much faster. There's going to be a lot less for us to go through and fix because there's going to be less things where it's picking up hits that aren't necessarily hits that we really want to quantize, uh, and it'll be a lot more accurate sounding. So now that's done, uh, we are going to actually quantize these. Uh, so I'm going to open up my inspector here. I can click any one of these because they're all grouped together. And I'm going to go to quantize and put 16th notes. I find this generally works the best for me. And if you look, just a few things have moved very slightly. Again, this drummer is very, uh, very on, so there's not going to be a whole lot. And now we're just going to listen through. And if we hear anything that sounds like it's gotten smeared or moved the wrong way one way or another then we'll just uh tighten that up when you're looking at these you'll see at the beginning of each marker now i'm only looking at the overheads but it's showing me everything of the the ones that i've had that cue clicked on so if i hear something that doesn't sound like it's going the right way i can either move it or oftentimes it's just maybe it's hit, hit a flam or something. I can just click on this little X and get rid of that and it will put it back where it originally started. Um, so let's give these a listen. Again, there's nothing on these drums. We're just hearing them flat. Probably okay, I'm not quite sure why that that picked up there, but that's okay. Let's show me a bar line. Let's skip ahead. All right, so right there, there was like a flam that sounded like it got pulled the wrong way. So I'm just going to take that off on either these and see how what it happened was it was it split up a hit into two hits. So let's listen back to that. Much better. So here's what we had before, and then here's what it should have been. A lot better. There might have been one. No, that one's fine. Again, in the interest of time, I'm not going to make you watch that entire thing, but you get the idea. You listen through it. Uh, often it's going to be a snare hit or maybe it's a flam, um, and Logic might misinterpret that and try and piece those too close together um, to the grid. Uh, so just go through and find anything that sounds a little bit funky and just turn it off. If you need to unquantize entire sections, um, sometimes that's a good trick to do as well, as long as it sounds natural when everything's done. When you're all done, listen to it with the click and just make sure everything feels spot on. 
and uh, and that's really it. It's very quick and easy, and uh, the results are great uh, as long as you are very careful with that. And again, the best trick in here is to uh, go through each of those individual uh, channels that you put the cue on and just narrow down the sensitivity for what it's trying to pick up. As a default, you saw it, it was super sensitive and it picked up everything. And that means that sometimes like symbol hits and that kind of thing will kind of skew your results and make it a lot longer to go through and fix up these tracks. Uh, so this has been helpful for you. If you have any questions, either for studio or for live, please feel free to leave a comment below, or you can email us at techtuesday at ascensionworship.com. If you have a project that you're working on that you need help with editing, mixing, and mastering, please contact me. I'd love to help you out. You can reach me at studio at ascensionworship.com. Until next time, have a great week. Again, this is Chad from Ascension Worship. I hope this has been helpful for you and your team. Come back here every Tuesday for new information.